Hello everyone, it's Rick. It is Monday, June 26, 2017. If you need to reach me, you can reach me at email, rick0327 at me.com. Okay, and you know, we're going to go along with the theme uh, today that I believe, this is my opinion now, that you are better off without an attorney. Uh, I would have never got gotten my support order vacated. Uh, the few people that had success following me, well, they all did it by themselves with a little coaching from me. Um, you know, I'm a friend Mike Gilligan. He was, uh, you know, finally got to see his children again by representing himself, firing attorneys. Um, Andre at upstate New York, he doesn't even need me anymore, this guy. He lets me look at his orders now. And I told him, I said, dude, you don't even need me to look at it anymore. He's, he's got it down. And Mike, too. Mike, see, what I do is I, uh, what's also good if you want to get my paperwork is you learn a writing style. It, and that's my writing style. My writing style is I, I, I present facts. I support the facts with uh, Supreme Court cases. I also uh, box these people in, because because I've done this so much. And you, you those of you that have been around long enough, when uh, when I first started making videos, when I before I knew how to do the screenshot stuff, you know, I used to hold my uh, phone up and remember I used to have my counter full of all papers, and I showed you. Um, my computer room, which I don't even use because all the papers are in there, the boxes of stuff that I have. Um, so I, 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 I've spent a lot of time, and I'm not done. I'm still like, uh, the way I write today, you know, June 26, it, it is different than three or four months ago. Um, and my paperwork's still good, but now I, I, I'm learning to say a lot without using as much paper, if you, if you can understand that. And it's also, you know, should be a reason if anybody's out there is considering or you're desperate enough to try and you know, to, to con me into sending you the paperwork and like the person I was telling you about yesterday. What what's what's what he didn't realize what he did was he is he can no longer get any more updates. Now, how many of you out there who, you know, got the paperwork for me four months ago, how many updates have I sent you guys, right? Remember when I used to send you seven, eight affidavits? Now, now we're over 45. And not to mention all the other, all the other, the PDFs, the study materials. Like, uh, look, like, look at this right here. No, I didn't send this. Um, I got this uh, while digging on the internet. I also get all the time, uh, you know, subscribers slash friends constantly sending me information all the time. And that's great. I mean, listen, I use it. A lot of you out there fishing, you know, uh, and it's great because you send it to me and it's awesome. So I don't have to dig as much. I can focus on other things. And I got, you know, you guys out there sending stuff to me. And a lot of you are really good. And I got something in here I'll show you in a, in a, in a minute. But uh, getting back to uh, why it, you're better off by yourself without an attorney. And I'll show you right here. All right. This is Corpus Juris Secundum, Legal Encyclopedia, Volume 7, Section 4. We will find that an attorney's first duty is to the court's and the public, not the client. <clears throat> I will leave this link in the description. Um, it's this website here, afreecountry.com. Uh, why people should never hire attorneys. And he, he backs it up with sound stuff. I mean, remember I said the other day, lawyers will never argue jurisdiction well why can't they argue jurisdiction here's the reason right here because as soon as you hire an attorney 
you're already you become the ward of the court. And the the attorney's obligation is to the court, right? So let's read it right here. Attorney client. See the see the arrow there that was done by somebody. His first duty, hold on one second here. Let me see if I can make this bigger. Okay. His first duty is to the courts and the public. Well, you're all part of the public, but I guess we'll forget about that, right? Not to the client. So they're assuming that <clears throat> this is, I, I believe this is when an, an attorney is assigned to you, right? Because wouldn't you be the public? But anyway, let's, let's move on. And wherever the duties to his client conflict with those he owes as an officer of the court, right? He is the officer, or he or she, they are officers of the court, which means they're supposed to be impartial. Which means, let's say, theoretically, the attorney could start out being against you and then after reading uh, and examining evidence, he or she realizes, like, holy cow, this guy doesn't owe child support. He was paying child support. She's lying. He's lying. Your Honor, I've come to, you know, the, I've come to the conclusion of uh, uh, recent facts and evidence, and that's it. Case dismissed. It's supposed to be. Right? But we have these attorneys who work for these child support agencies, and they will lie and, and misrepresent laws all the time. I mean, I had to, I had to create an affidavit just for that. Let me see if I can find it real fast. All right, me and my wife. Okay. Hold on here. <clears throat> Notice. Clerk. Response to child support. Response. Uh, okay, let me see. Bear with me. All right. Now, I had to make this affidavit because these attorneys were not, they're not complying with the interrogatory. And we've discussed in the past, and, you know, anybody that just jumped on, uh, just subscribed to Rick, uh, we discussed in my past videos that the, uh, you know, the Federal Child Support Enforcement, they have these manuals for the attorneys. There are 12 chapters. Chapter 7, they encourage the use of interrogatories as a discovery device. So in other words, the attorney working for the child support agency is encouraged to use an interrogatory to get discovery from you rather than having a court, you know, uh, file a motion to the court, you know, demanding discovery. We use an administrative uh, discovery device called an interrogatory. Well, an interrogatory under Federal Rule 33, you're allowed to use it to, uh, to you know, demand discovery from the child support agency that, that works for the state, right? That's a state corporate, uh, and it's also a corporate uh, agency. <clears throat> it's a state agency under Federal Rule 33. They're not allowed to object. What they do all the time, or they play dumb with the writing, or you, you didn't phrase it the right way. You know, that's why I try to make them as simple as possible now. In the beginning, I got cute, and I realized simple is better sometimes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so what I say here is, as an officer of the court sworn to support the United States Constitution and Bill of Rights, you have a sworn responsibility to remain impartial and must refrain from remaining silent when having a legal duty to respond or representing the laws and facts for the unlawful collection practices in violation of executive order, blah, 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 blah. All with all income withholding orders 
must be sent by first class by the Secretary of Health and Human Services. We didn't know that, right? We know it now. So basically what I'm telling them here is you're not allowed to get cute with me. You're an officer of the court. You have to remain impartial. Yeah, I know that you work for the Child Support Agency, but I'm asking you to show me evidence of a debt. See, remember, that's what we're trying to do. And uh, this is what I want you guys also to start thinking with this uh, paternity, uh, de-establishing paternity. How about uh, de-establishing a debt first? Who cares about paternity if they can't prove a debt? Remember what I said. Because of the welfare, they're alleging, they're presuming that the, uh, the baby mama, whatever, is uh, receiving public assistance based upon your non-payment of support. Where is the proof of you not paying? That is the first thing the court's supposed to be doing. But if they sidetrack that. And they get most of us on the defensive. Some of us aren't paying our child support. So you're going in there already with that in your head. And if you are one of those people, I don't want to know. Okay? I had a misunderstanding the other day with somebody. And I wasn't going to help him. I don't want to help anybody... And I've actually, in the past, I've turned people away who admitted to me they didn't pay child support. And I'm like, sorry, dude, I'm not helping you. Okay? I don't believe in helping people not pay child support. And a lot of, a lot of us are in this boat because there are a lot of deadbeats out there that never pay child support. I don't want to know. Okay? Remember what I said? Never admit to not paying child support. So remember, we're going to go to court. You're going to object. Here's another objection. Objection. Can this court prove that I didn't pay child support? Your Honor, he didn't pay me any child support. That's all they got. Or the lawyer speak of. Your Honor, my client says that so-and-so didn't pay child support. Objection. Where's the proof? Well, weren't you told you were supposed to come in here and bring... No, listen, that's what you're telling me to do. There's no law that says I have I can uh, incriminate myself or enter evidence against myself. Fifth Amendment against self-incrimination. Remember, you have all of these rights. Constitution, as far as I'm concerned, is still in effect. Okay? So this is the way you have to start thinking. You have to start thinking that they must prove it against you. Okay, remember, the support order is void. Why is it void? Well, they have no proof that you didn't pay child support. The person issuing it if, uh, doesn't have jurisdiction. Why? Because they don't have any proof that you, that you weren't paying child support. See, what they do is, is they say, well, the law says you have to pay child support, but what yeah, you're right. The law says the law says you're not supposed to go through a red light. You're not supposed to go through a stop sign. But when 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 are those laws enforced? When they catch you going through a red light, or when they catch you going through a stop sign, right? So where is the proof that you didn't pay child support? That's the only time the law is in effect is when they have proof that you broke the law or the duty, as they call it. And what is a duty? A duty is a debt. When does a debt come in place? when it's alleged that you owe somebody money. And what are we always trying to do? With the interrogatory, where is the evidence that I owe a debt? And that's where we get caught up in all this stuff where they, they're playing games. But your friend Rick is finally working on it. Here it is. Notice to the court, writ of mandamus to compel, writ of prohibition. It's not done yet. I'll let you know when it's done. But if this is to give you guys, you know, show. I'm showing you that I finally am starting. I'm feeling it. <laughs> Remember I told you I'm, I'm instinctual? Well, I'm starting to feel it. And what you're going to do with that is when they don't comply with the interrogatories, 
um, when they're issuing these income withholding orders without a judicial signature, remember, uh, income withholding order without a judicial signature, remember, there's a box there. What is it called again? Can we all say it together? Quorum non judis. That's what it is. Well, an income withholding order without judicial signature is void too. So now we have all this. We're, we're standing in a very good spot right now. I know it's taken us some time. And, and I remember I told you, I'm bringing you along. But when we're ready to enter that, we're going to have so much evidence in our favor. And also, we will have exhausted these remedies. Remember, we've discussed it already. I've, I've said it, that these courts, they want you to, for some reason, I don't know, you know, listen, they, these courts don't like to admit uh, another court or another body or whatever is issuing void judgments. They're, these courts will do anything they can to protect us. One of the hardest things to do is to get a court to admit that another court issued a void judgment or a lawyer or, or, or a make-believe fake judge issued one. But we know we have proof now because what are we doing? As soon as you get the package from me, I'm having you send out all this paperwork to the clerk, to the child support agency, um, to whatever, to get info, get proof. Uh, clerk, can you show me proof of a money judgment? What do you mean? Oh, we don't do that. You know, they're playing games. A lot of, a lot of guys are getting responses from these clerks. Uh, we're not supposed to look for, yes, you are. I'm looking for a money judgment. It's being, it's being alleged that I owe money. Can I please see that money judgment? Doesn't exist. That way, in the writ of mandamus, we're going to put in there that on such and such a date, hopefully you still got the receipt uh, that you sent by certified mail or registered mail, that, and then you got a response back. We're going to enter that as an exhibit. Then we're going to show that you tried to, to get proof of a debt by sending interrogatory. And hopefully, and let's remember, this is why we're doing this. You got a letter with a lawyer's name on the bottom claiming that, oh, you didn't word it the right way and blah, 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 blah. Listen, he's getting cute. Your Honor, well, not Your Honor, but, you know, in, in the writ of mandamus. On such such a date, uh, the undersigned uh, tr uh, attempted to uh, attempted to receive discovery of uh, proof of a debt, and you know, I they either they didn't respond or when they did respond, they they were playing it was semantics. <clears throat> then, when the, in the writ of mandamus, writ of prohibition, we're gonna we're also gonna show that the ink that you you know you let them know that the income withholding order was void and they're like well sir they're using all these little games with we have a whole bunch of evidence all because we followed this game plan of gathering evidence proving that at no time did you owe a debt and we have the proof now and the court has and now Thankfully, you know, a week and a half ago, uh, let me show you how I found it. Okay. Now, I got my favorite bar down here, uh, Supreme Court case. I clicked on it. I was looking for something else, but I, didn't, I told you guys, I didn't realize that they're constantly updating. See? The U.S. Department of Justice... Dismisses Houston IRS summons case. IRS agent issues new summons response commercially. Right here, quorum non judice, before a person, not a judge. I found this by accident, dated June 7th. Okay? As soon as I saw this, I knew I hit gold. Because finally, I had a Supreme Court decision that set, backed up what I've always maintained. Remember, we were, always we were always relying on the 28 U.S.C. 1691. So now we have a Supreme Court case, right? Uh, well, quorum non judice, and we have 28 U.S.C. 1691 
no judicial signature. You, you know, you cannot get any better than that. We, you, you, we have the nails in the coffin. Now we can prove it all the way back to, back to the from the beginning. We're talking about a lot of money. If they may have been collected from you based on a void judgment for a long time, don't. That's why we have to get this right. All right. So I want to shut. This is so. This is what we're doing. This is why I want you to realize that. You're better off doing this by yourself, in my opinion, okay? When you get an attorney, you become a ward of the court, see? What is the legal relationship between an attorney and a client? According to Section 2 in said Section 7, we find that clients are wards of the court. You know what that means? They're treating you like a child. You're a child. Don't you feel like you're being treated like a child by these attorneys anyway? Right? So an attorney means to turn around. Okay? Uh, attorney, client, okay, the aid to the court, and the term is synonymous with attorney. Therefore, anyone advertising himself as a lawyer holds himself out to be an attorney, an attorney at law. Or counsel at law. If one appears before any court in the interest of another and moves the court to action with respect to any matter before it of a legal nature, such person appears as an advocate, and that term is generally understood. As an advocate in a representative capacity. Okay, the lawyer is your advocate. A client is one who applies to a lawyer or counsel for advice and direction. But remember, the attorney, the, the lawyer, the lawyer whose first duty is where? To the court. So we got a conflict of interest here. Uh, we're going to be down here. One who communicates facts to an attorney expecting professional advice. Clients are also called wards of the court in regard to the relationship with their attorney. Uh, warded of courts, okay? Here goes the, here goes the def definition. Warded of infants and persons of unsound mind. You're an idiot. Look up idiot. Idiot's not a bad, it's not a, bad, a, a negative term. As you, it, but it means is that you're a simpleton. You, you, you don't understand. So that's why the attorney's representing you, is to explain it to you, because you're, you're feeble-minded. Okay, your unsound mind. These are nice people, right? Are you an infant or a person of unsound mind? No, you're a smart person. You know why you're a smart person? You're, you're, you're subscribed to my channel. <laughs> but anyway, no, but that, and that's true too because you, you, how did you find my channel? You're digging for the truth. You're digging for knowledge. You know something was wrong. So you, 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 by some keyword in, in YouTube, you came across my channel. Maybe you found me by Amin Osiris uh, mentioning my name. I know a lot of you have found Amin Osiris from me. And, and on would we go. And I don't recommend any other channels. And if I don't say anything, then because I, I, there's, there's some stuff that I know. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping my head above the fray. I'm not going to get into this wrestling mentality, you know. Another channel I used to, in the beginning, I used to recommend, and then he started taking jabs at me, Mr. Uh, Etymology, okay? And I think it was because uh, at one time he had uh, a lot more subscribers than I, and I left him in the dust. So maybe uh, <clears throat> a, lot of, a lot of people had stopped going to him. Okay, oh, here's another one. Now, remember, you, you saw me in the car. I always do it in quotations, pro se. That's what they want you to be called, pro se. Because when you're pro se, you're, you're, you're representing yourself or whatever, but you have to abide by the rules of, like, the, the same rules as lawyers because they're claiming that you're, you're, you're wearing a lawyer hat. So you're a, you have to follow those rules. That's the reason why there's a bar association. They have the rules of the court. They have to follow. You and I... 
do not have to follow those rules. Okay? What I do is sometimes I you put in before, uh, let's say, uh, Federal Rule 60B. You put in before it CF, which is like, it means compared to. So you're, you're, you're claiming that, yeah, you know, what my, the point I'm trying to make is compared to that, but I'm not using that law. All right? So in propia persona, in one's own proper person, it was formerly a rule in pleading that pleas to the jurisdiction of the court must be pled in propia persona because if pled, pled by the attorney, you're giving the court jurisdiction. They admit jurisdiction. And I swear on my mother, I didn't read this before until now, and I just, and so I was just guessing, and I got it right. As an attorney is an officer of the court, he is presumed to plead after having obtained leave, which admits jurisdiction. Okay? All right, so listen, I'm going to shut this down. All right, we're at 26 minutes. I kept going. Um, <clears throat> so I, hopefully you see here that you're better off uh, as yourself. You don't need an attorney. And I hopefully I proved that to you. All right, I'm losing my voice anyway. <clears throat> All right, so enjoy the rest of your day, guys, uh, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.